The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, and what position you are at. You could be standing on your head as long as you're here at this time. <coughs> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we got a good question already. We'll get into stuff. Uh, and uh, Nancy wants to know, is there some kind of secret handshake that causes the market to trigger a sell-off within a, a relatively short time frame, such as the one that took uh, place around noon East Coast, to, uh, East, uh, Coast time today? Some kind of secret signal. Maybe uh, maybe the drums, like all the African movies had the drums telling everybody what to do. And then, of course, if you're a Jimmy Buffett fan, they had the Coconut Telegraph where people would uh, tap on those. But uh, no, there isn't. Uh, my understanding uh, is uh, that at least the one today uh, that seems to be getting repaired uh, had to do with a rumor that I will not repeat uh, that uh, is not true. But, of course, everybody's still wondering why it all happened. But uh, uh, we had a bunch of people uh, instantly sell a handful of very concentrated big guys on Wall Street thinking that they had something, but not a whole lot there. Off uh, 23 on the S&P cash as we speak, Dow's up 85, the Nasdaq's off 190. And, of course, uh, yeah, it could have been a bear raid. Maybe they thought they knew something that they didn't know. Uh, I'm going to say that the rumor I heard was rather salacious. And, uh, yeah, just about as much as every fake news story that we've heard for the last three or four or five years. Uh, that uh, after a number of times, you just say, you know, these people are not telling the truth. But, uh, you know, people on Wall Street, they're they're very good at clicking that mouse uh, and letting the dust settle and then coming back later. But now I don't think much is going on here. We did test on almost no volume or I'm going to say light volume. Uh, a lot of uh, previous lows, uh, as Steve Rhodes said in the previous hour. So there's not a lot to add into that. Uh, I'm really kind of looking forward because I don't think much has actually happened today that's going to change much. But uh, let's get into the sit rep. Uh, we've got uh, Tim Ord on today. So we need to make sure and uh, uh, be ready. If you want to give him a call, 877-927-6648. He's got a handful of charts already sent to him, but uh, we'll see about that. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, um, big winner today, of course, is uh, Taiwan Semiconductor uh, up uh, eh, 7%. I think it was up 11 or 12% earlier in the day. Uh, when I was watching it. Uh, very interesting to watch how this closes over the next couple of days. The reason why is uh, the people that are big fans of value stocks uh, dislike with a passion when uh, these big companies start spending cash. Uh, one of the reasons Intel got itself into the problem it got into was that no one wanted them to see, uh, spend any money to remain competitive with Taiwan Semi. And slowly they fell behind. And generally the, the people on Wall Street don't really care. They'll just sell the stock when you've actually run out of gas, uh, as uh, Intel did for a number of years. And then you have to go back and start all back over. But anyway, keep an eye on that because generally I can't remember a, a, a big running stock that at least didn't see a fairly, uh, let's call it, minor to medium setback uh, when the uh, value crowd takes a leap and they tend to leap when you start spending money 
because that means that that's not going to be money you're showing you're making next year, and they can't jack the price up even further. Uh, great company, uh, going to be spending $40 billion, billion with a B, uh, on CapEx over the next year. And, of course, uh, uh, AMAT, some of those other ones. To me, that's the safer bet uh, because uh, guess what? It's not about CapEx for uh, AMAT. It's going to be about all that money, which about half of it uh, is going to be from Taiwan Semi if they're going to spend $40 because AMAT is the man on the uh, chip circuit when you have to build stuff. Um, anyway, that's kind of interesting. Uh, KBH had a nice pop. It had four days to cover. Uh, it's up 16%. I kind of figured that when it started off this morning, there were a lot more shorts to squeeze. Uh, as I said in the newsletter, generally you're short uh, several days, uh, or actually a factor of three, the three hours, three days, three weeks or three months early on shorting something. I think you're, uh, a lot of the people that got short KBH are about three weeks early. Uh, when that first rate hike happens in February, I think it'll be a different story. Uh, earnings uh, tomorrow with uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, BlackRock, uh, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. Uh, we are closed Monday, and I think a lot of people, after the big rally up, had decided that they were going to cash out today before we get into three days. Also, options, uh, one of the reasons why I sold my Micron stock, uh, my uh, options yesterday, uh, before the Taiwan Semi uh, earnings, which were probably going to be at least okay, uh, was uh, that we're going to see options premiums really decay because instead of the normal two days, you're going to get one more extra day because we are closed on Monday, as we said. Uh, but uh, watch that very uh, closely. I think that a lot of stuff may move later in the day, but they're going to wait until they – it almost always happens, just like uh, – just like uh, uh, Looking at your watch, you just know. Uh, they'll wait until the premiums fade. They'll they'll run the people out, and then the the reversal will happen throughout the later part of the day. But if you're thinking about getting options, just remember uh, that they're going to decay all the way into Friday, and then they're probably going to open up uh, at least for the premium part significantly lower on Tuesday if nothing happens. So this is a tough time to hold options. I've got one that I have that I started off with uh, that the options were literally, I think I paid 10 or 20 cents a premium for a week or nine days or something. So I'm kind of sitting pretty with that. There's not much that they can do with the premiums. So that's it. When we come back on Tuesday, we got uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, J.B. Hunt, and uh, we'll find out a little bit about uh, uh, interactive brokers. Maybe they'll let us know a little bit. Wednesday, we've got Bank of America, ASML, uh, which I think someone was talking to, to uh, uh, Steve uh, about before. Uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, United Health, uh, Procter & Gamble, Fastenal, United Airlines, American Airlines. Uh, Thursday, got AAL, KPH, uh, Netflix, uh, Intuitive Surgical, CSX. So, starting to get into the meat of earnings next week. We'll be back with uh, Tim Ward. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We've got Tim Ord on the line. Tim Ord has been writing a newsletter for over 30 years, won many awards for Timer of the Year in many different uh, disciplines, uh, from the medals to the indexes, written his book, The, the Soft uh, Secret of uh, Price and Volume, that's available on Amazon. And uh, yeah, always a pleasure to have you on the line, Tim. Thank you uh, for having me on again. Um, I sent those uh, charts over yesterday. I hope you got them. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, because I was actually, I had an appointment today. I didn't really have time to. So anyhow, I, I got them done yesterday. But it really shouldn't make any difference uh, one day in these charts. But um, you, uh, we could take a look at this uh, DocuSign uh, stock first. Somebody requested what they thought about it. Mm-hmm. Do you want you want to do that one first? I've I've got it up. All right. Um, well, anyhow, back in uh, uh, 2020, it looks like probably August September. I got a little note there that says buying climax, and um, that's when the market really shot up, shot up over 280, and kind of came back down. But the volume exploded. Uh, you know, it was eyeballing it, you know, it's probably about 50% higher than the previous days around it. And normally that kind of just stops the market. That much energy in that short period of time really puts a halt in the market. And that's what happened there. You had a buying climax and market flipped sideways, uh, you know, for the next, uh, you know, six, seven, eight months. Didn't really do anything. Then, then in, uh, looks like about probably June of 2021, went back up again and tested that high of, uh, of August of, of 2020. And if you notice, volume was not even half. And so uh, that was kind of a warning sign. Normally when you break previous highs, no matter it's on a daily, weekly, or monthly chart, this chart's a monthly chart. And you should at least break those previous highs on, on uh, equal volume at least, uh, preferably a little bit higher. And that's not what happened here. So that was kind of a warning sign uh, that uh, the market was having a hard time going forward. 
what kind of turned everything bearish here? Uh, I got the Bollinger Bands there, and as long as uh, the monthly Bollinger mid Bollinger Bands going up, I consider the stock in an uptrend. When it closes below the mid Bollinger Band, usually that's a warning sign that the market may be peaking. Well, it went below the mid Bollinger Band and also went below the previous lows of. Uh, uh, Eyeballing it, it looks like about 180 there, uh, those lows back in 2020 and, two, and early 2021, around the 180 there. I blew through those lows. Um, actually, you had a sign of strength, and at the same time, you also find or a sign of weakness, rather. And those sign of weakness is also a kind of a selling climax. So that will really stop the decline. And, um, and now at this month, January, we're testing the previous lows of, of that monthly chart or that monthly bar in December, and we're probably most likely will test it on a lighter volume. And the market's going to attempt to rally. Uh, what I think is probably we'll, we'll head back up to 180 area and probably stop. Because then now you're below the Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Bands, um, you know, are kind of turning down now. Uh, so I'd have to say this stock is because of December uh, breaking below previous support and breaking below the mid Bollinger Band on the monthly time frame. This stock now is in a downtrend. It may rally back to 180, maybe 190, uh, but that's probably about it. So until we get back above the mid Bollinger Band, which is a long ways up, around 220, you know this this stock is, in my opinion, in a bearish mode now. So. That's okay. how I read that stock. Well, it's certainly bearish today. It's off another 4 or 5%. So, yeah, only tw only 20 yeah. days before it's free, if you if you want to look at it that way. Um, yeah, that's true. So, uh, but, yeah, we'll, so, but, but I still think we'll bounce here just because of the selling climax we had in December. You know, it's uh, the exhaustion to the downsides, you know, is... is uh, well, it's kind of exhaustion. That's exactly what it means. So it'll, it'll tempt to try to go up here, but it's, it's, uh, the risk is not worth the investment. So, but uh, we, we can move on uh, if you want, okay. unless you want to talk some more about it. No, it's good. Okay. Um, I got two two other charts. Uh, kind of people wanted to, to look at a uh, view of, of, of the bigger trend. And I got two different charts and kind of two different methods. And actually, both are kind of saying the same thing. And if you could pull up the uh, bullish percent index for the NYSE. I've got it. All right. Uh, this chart goes back to like 2001. And bullish percent index uh, for the NYSE, what the bullish percent index does, it measures uh, the percentage of stocks that are, that are on point and figure buy signals. So the reading right now, I got circled in red there, is 56.81. In other words, 56.81% of the stocks in the NYSE are on point and figure buy signal. Well, it turns out uh, that's uh, when you get below 60%, or I got a or 65%, I got a red line drawn across, across there on the bullish percent index, and that's kind of a danger sign if you get below that. And I got little circles in blue there. At that 65, and um, and a lot of times those picked out significant highs. Uh, if you go back and look at 2002, it never got above 65 percent of the stocks above NYC gave on buy signals. That was kind of a top. In 2007, there uh, it looked like it didn't even get above 60 percent stocks above this uh, on the bullish percent index. And in 2015, you know, it peaked out about 65%. And they had another high in 2018. It didn't even get back to 65%. And right now, even though we're, we're pretty much not far from all-time highs here on the NYSE or on the SPX, the uh, bullish percent index is at 56%. So this is, you know, it, markets, market weakens before it finally tops. And normally when you get... You know, 65% of the stocks um, or below that are, uh, or not, in other words, 45% of the stocks or below or higher 
on point figure sell signals that you got a kind of a big drag on the market. And if you notice also, if you look at the monthly SPX chart, you're way above the mid Bollinger band. That mid Bollinger band is like a magnet. If you get too far above it, you go back down to it. If you get far too far below it, you'll come back up to it. And that's a long ways down from your area. You know, we're at 4,700 area on the SPX. And that mid Bollinger band is at 4,000. So uh, at some point, I don't know when, but you're probably going to get sucked down to that mid Bollinger band at some point. So um, okay. I, I hear if, the music. So. Yeah, if, if, if you want to uh, look at uh, Boeing BA during the break, and we'll talk about it when we come back. All right. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, we have our guest, uh, Tim Ford, on. We're going to talk about Boeing in just a second. I like to okay. say if it's Boeing or I'm not going. When it's talking about, <laughs> I know a lot of people are Airbus fans, Air, Airbus fanboys, but not me. Uh, of course, the pilots like it because the uh, cockpit is bigger than the Boeing's. But uh, anyway, um, what I was going to bring up. Oh, um, on three day weekends, we've talked about this in the past, maybe a year ago. 
we got one coming up this weekend. Um, you kind of early on in the 2000s talked about how three-day weekends can be major turning points, mostly because people get a, a day off to go back and rethink, or extra day off, or they go out and visit their friends and family. Uh, mostly you thought about it at least early on back then as the big three-day weekends of the summer. But uh, does, uh, does that kind of exclude this one, or... Does it include one, like uh, Monday when well, it's closed? Well, a lot of times, I, I know it's kind of like holidays. You know, things change over time. I think when everybody gets uh, committed to some indicator, normally they'll quit working. But in the past, if you're rallying into a holiday, a lot of times the volume will drop out, and that holiday will turn into some sort of a high. If you ever notice July 4th uh, time frames, you know, it's not exactly a on the 4th, but usually around the July 4th holidays, either uh, going into some sort of a high or going into some sort of a low. Uh, this one we got coming up, what was President's Day or something? Um, forgot, or Martin Luther King, maybe? Forgot yep. what it was. But anyhow, uh, if you go into a holiday, usually people take off, you know, traders take off early, and a lot of times the volume uh, lacks. So if you're going, market's going up into a holiday, and volume starts to drop off, that would be a bearish sign. You know, you don't make excuses for volume. Volume, you take it as verbatim. Um, but, you know, if the market rally here into this coming Friday, to me that would be a kind of a bearish sign, as, you know, assuming volume will drop off. Are hey, you still and there? That, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? You hear me? I, I I lost about the last thirty seconds of you, but I've got you now. Oh, can you? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, anyhow, um, and you can hear. All right. Well, anyhow, volume a lot of times around holidays drop off because traders take off early for that holiday, and if the market's rallying up into a holiday period, a lot of times the volume will drop off, and that's kind of a bearish sign to. That's market energy to the upside decreasing, so it could represent a top. Same if the market's going down into a holiday, volume a lot of times will drop off, and that'd be a bullish sign. So if the market holds up into Friday here, um, and we you know pretty much at this level a little bit higher, uh, to me that would beginning of expiration week, which the next week would be kind of a bearish sign. Um, actually, I'm actually short right now. I got short a couple of days ago. Uh, just for other reasons. But um, if we get hit here over the next couple of days, um, and the volume's not, you know, I'll cover that I'll cover that short. But, you know, historically, though, going around holidays, if you're rallying into a holiday, the volume lightens up. That's bearish. If you're going down into a holiday, volume dries up. Uh, that's bullish. So that's why I said years ago. And it, and, and, and it still kind of plays out. Um you know, as far as volume is concerned. So, um, I know. Okay. Anyway, we're looking at a chart of Boeing. Okay. Um, you know, the chart's kind of goofy here. You know, obviously, you look back at 2019 high, it looks like a head and shoulders bottom, and it worked out to be the case. You know, basically, in late 2019, you, you started closing below the mid Bollinger band that kind of gave you confirmation that the market was going to uh, go down and it did. And you got, um, went, really went down in a hurry and, um, kind of got a some volume spikes down there, kind of exhausted the market to the downside. Um, now you're above the mid Bollinger band, but the mid Bollinger band is still trending down. So, and you got the, Bollinger bands on the month. This is a monthly chart. They're starting to squeeze here too. I mean, they've kind of come together because Boeing, you know, over the last twelve months, there really hasn't done a lot. I mean, it's, it's worked itself down a little bit, but movement really hasn't done a lot. You know, it hasn't really gone up. It's gone down a little bit, but not much for the last twelve months. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be long or short this. 
Boeing here just because it's not really giving a lot of clues what it's going to do next. So, um, you know, my answer to this chart would be neutral. Um, I mean, okay. it could probably do go anywhere. The, the rally uh, from the 2020, even though it started off kind of good, uh, the volume didn't really stay with it as it went up. And then when it went down, the volume kind of just stayed lackluster. Um, okay. So Why don't we uh, uh, take a look uh, at, or get started on this summation index chart you sent me? All right. Summation index. All right. Uh, things can uh, always put down trouble can happen when the summation index falls below zero. <coughs> and this chart goes back to uh, uh, 2014. And the, the top chart there is a NYSE summation index. And I got a red line drawn at zero there. And uh, then I got blue uh, vertical lines showing when it dropped below zero. And uh, and right now, we're, we're as this was yesterday, a couple of days ago, we closed at plus 35. So that's not real decisive that we're really climbing above zero here, but it's in a danger zone. And what, you know, we did kind of, if you look at the bottom window, the bottom window is the NYSE McCollin Oscillator. When it gets below minus about 250, it's kind of a selling climax. And I marked those with red circles. Then uh, coming out of those selling climaxes, you want the McCollin Oscar, you get above 200 to show minus strength. Well, we did get the uh, selling climax, but we really haven't got the sell of the, the sign of strength off that low. And if we don't, that would be kind of a bearish sign. So I'm thinking we're, we're, we're kind of a, making a peak in here. Uh, unless we get a sign of strength pushing this market higher, we may be topping out right around this range in here. And that kind of goes along with the bullish percent index on the, the chart I showed earlier. Uh, on the NYSE, you know, we're, we're at um, 56. Anything below 65% of stocks, uh, it's kind of a danger zone. So this uh, NYSE summation index hanging around zero is another kind of a bearish sign. You know, two different methods kind of saying the same thing. So I'm not real bullish here, but uh, um, short term, I'm kind of bearish, but it still needs another week or two to really clear the picture if this is a significant top or not. Okay, why don't so. you uh, take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA, during the break, and uh, we'll be back. The NV what? DA. VA. NV. DA. NDV. NDV. N are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And as we turn, uh, we're with uh, Tim Ord, the author of the Ord Oracle. Uh, you can reach him at ord-oracle.com. Of course, uh, a noted author available on Amazon, The Secret Science of Price and Volume. And we are back. Uh, messed up the uh, ticker a little bit there, so we won't bother with that one uh, right now. Um, did want to talk to you a bit about gold. And uh, um, what we've got going on here now, which is uh, looks like finally holding 1800 and looks a little bit better than it did over the last few weeks ago. Any thoughts on it? Yeah, there's uh, um, there's a head and shoulders bottom. Uh, yeah, if we knew we were going to talk about it, I would have sent a chart over. But there's a head and shoulders bottom uh that's part of a right shoulder of a gigantic head and shoulders bottom that goes back to 2011. And the right shoulder head and shoulders bottom has a neckline at 1850. So we're kind of not backing away from it. We'll get up to 1820 or 1825 here the other day, kind of backed away. But you should see a sign of strength through 1850. And it'll probably come news, you know, some conflict somewhere in the world, so that could be China or Russia, probably. And uh, it'll be, um, but anyhow, eighteen fifty is an important number, and uh, I don't know when that eighteen fifty is going to be broke, but that's the neckline, and we'll see a sign of strength through it. And uh, so I'm thinking there's going to be some conflict in the world, probably within the next thirty days or less, and uh, to really confirm that that pattern. Uh, that that head and shoulders pattern dates back to August of 2020. That's where the head and shoulders pattern began. So if you kind of look at it and draw the, the neckline at those highs down, you'll see it comes in right around 1850. So uh, I'm thinking we are going to break through it. I just don't know when, but I think it's going to be not a year from now. But, you know, I think it's probably will happen in the next 30 days. I got some other stuff on a shorter term basis that are on the buy signal, even though not a lot of price action has happened. I do got some bullish divergence and, and quite a few different indicators. So I'm thinking something's probably going to happen within the next 30 days. So what, um, uh, the thing I was looking at was the G in the GLD, which is uh, one way that everybody can look at it. Um, is when I'm looking at the monthly and going back, it looks back the high on August 31st uh, last year in 2020, kind of set the high. But if you've got a, a trend line moving up uh, that goes back to uh, October of 2018, we're kind of now at least back into what I'm going to call it, uh, February of, uh, of 2021, kind of a big triangle setting up here when I'm looking at the monthly. And it looks like we've made it to the apex, 
which is one of the reasons I've gotten kind of excited about it now. It looks like maybe all the consolidation and hoopla is over of that retest of the previous high up to 194. But um, what, are you looking at any of that stuff? or? Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm looking at the, so you're looking at the daily or, or uh, no, I'm looking at a month. You? I'm looking at a monthly going back to the August 30 for, uh, 31st high. Right. And okay. the, what's well, the March you're calling 30th. that a triangle? Well, if you look at the uh, March 31st low, right. Okay, I see it. Yeah. A triangle over about, I don't know, 12, 15 months or something, whatever that is. Yeah. And yeah. now it certainly looks like an apex to me, right? Or kind right. of yeah, it does. Yeah. You're back. Uh, can't hear you again. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Kind of, you're going in and out. But anyhow, you see, I got, I see that too. But if you go back to the August 2020 high and you connect those highs, you'll see that that March low of um, 2021 or uh, yeah, March low that was the head of a head and shoulders bottom right if you can see that so then you got the triangle pattern going on here too pushing out the apex a lot of times those first <coughs> excuse me the first moves out of those apex a lot of times those first moves are, are the opposite way the market really breaks but so you might have a gyration before these big you ever notice these great big moves when they start? They, they kind of like knock everybody out. They knock the longs, they knock the shorts out. So I'm thinking there could be a gyration before this move to the upside really begins. So kind of a, a slap in the face before the rally begins. And I don't know if that's going to happen here. But um, I, yeah, it is time to get kind of excited. And uh, the apex of that triangle, you know, think the, the market's going to make its mind up here in, in pretty short order. You know, it could be, you know, days away or, or weeks away, but it's not months away. So don't know when that break is going to come, but it's going to come fairly soon. So, and so, yeah, I'm kind of excited here, too, because once that break starts and that right shoulder, head and shoulders bottom gets going, then you then you got a bigger head and shoulders bottom dating back to 2011. Um that you can look forward to too. So the, the the rally could be very big impulse rally. Well, we've so, got about uh, we've got about two minutes left. I've got a question uh, about uh, what your downside target is on the S and P five hundred. If you're short, uh, do you have anything well, there on this? Yeah, on my trade right now, is how I'm telling my customers, I think we're probably on the SPX go back to forty five hundred. So. I think you'll probably find support there. Um, so I, I don't think, usually markets weaken first. You, you really don't get big declines, so you at least get a 5% decline. And we kind of had one back in uh, that September high to the October low. So I think here, you know, this short one may play out to uh, you find support basically at the early December low, which is around 4,500. And if we get panic there in the ticks and trend and VIX, then it'll probably be a worthwhile bottom there, and we may rally back up to where we are right now again. So I'm thinking down, then probably back up again. And the whole thing could develop into where that December high of, uh, or that be last year, you know, just a month ago, could be ahead, and we're screwing around with a right shoulder pattern going on, which may take another couple of months to form. That's that may change, but that's kind of what may unfold in the coming weeks. So this, this short that I'm on right now, I think most likely we'll get down to the December low, and most likely we'll probably have panic. And markets always bottom on panics. If you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. But if does panic does form in that 4,500 area, I'll probably cover the short. Yeah, if the panic's strong enough, I could possibly end up with a buy signal there. Okay. So I think the whole thing's kind of topping pattern here. Anyway, we'll be so. uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, Tim. Uh, Tim. All right. Uh, at the org oracle dot com. Want to thank you for being back on again, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. We return a voice from Christmas past. Greg, glad to see you again out here. And uh, big trader for a long time. Uh, gold, a uh, question about this triangle pattern setting up. And really, for the most part, it's just uh, lower highs and higher lows coming out. But uh, I really like this pattern like as Tim said earlier, this is when the, the market eventually has to make a, <clears throat> a decision of whether or not it's going higher or lower. And like I said, I kind of thought that gold looked uh, as good as it has in several years uh, over the last couple of days. But we shall see. Uh, other things going on here. Did I get uh, Did I accidentally close that? Maybe I, I did. Yeah. I don't know what's going on here. Having weird things happening. But uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, we're off, uh, what, 36 points on the S&P cash and uh, 250 on the NASDAQ. But I, I think it's just continuing on. Uh, we had some rumors out around two. I think a lot of people are still scratching their head about what happened and where it came from. But uh, we shall see. Going into a three-day weekend, I think uh, a lot of people have decided to just cash their chips in. I uh, haven't seen, uh, I watched about five minutes of 
CNBC today to see that these guys are incredibly bearish at the moment. And that generally means that they're probably a little bit early, um, as most people are when they're getting short. But uh, eh, not a lot going on. I think tomorrow will be a light volume day uh, going into the three-day weekend. When we come back Tuesday, I think we're probably going to have <clears throat> a much better idea. Options uh, really don't show a whole lot here. We're kind of just in this kind of messy trading range. But uh, we'll see how the uh, how Friday goes. Not a lot just yet, at least as far as I can see. See you tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to.